Hello, true duelists. YGO Strats back with another episode of this, this being Why I Play, where I talk about what drew me to a deck. This week, I'm looking at B Trooper. That's right, it's about bugs, and I've probably just thrown some videos or pictures of bugs behind me that I don't want to think about gathering later. Gross. I first saw Bugs or Bee Trooper being played on Dueling Book, and I hadn't been paying attention to Dawn of Majesty or any of the leaks from it or the announcements. I actually had no clue whatsoever that Bee Trooper existed, which is a little weird. I hadn't seen anyone talk about them. I follow, you know, DPYGO and Lithium. I waste a lot of my time at work on r slash Yu-Gi-Oh to the point where it could probably legally be classified as time theft, but the boss don't know, it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Still, I, I generally pay attention and it was a little strange. I went on to ranked on Dueling Book and there's someone playing all these new cards and I'm, I'm interested. It was like Playground Yu-Gi-Oh again. Someone had new toys and I wanted them. From the first combo I saw being played, I was hooked. It was using Resonance Insect, which is just a stupidly good card. It played Doomdozer as an extension and could function as a main deck beater, which is something I love. Goki Pole's abusable, and we're not even into the archetype yet. The deck plays two real archetypes, Bee Troopers and Battle Wasps. And man, in that first wave for Bee Trooper, it was just good cards. Scout Buggy is like a tour guide in that it's an instant rank three or link two, but where tour guide's widely splashable, Scout Buggy trades that, and instead it's just like infinite recurability. As long as you can revive a Scout Buggy, you will get two Scout Buggies. Scale Bomber is easy extension, plus the effect to get cards off the opponent's field is always good, less monsters for them is always a win in my books. And Sting Lancer is a self-summoning monster with Fiend Griefing as the effect to summon itself that also searches the spell and trap. Their Link 2 is an extra normal summon that can banish from the grave to revive itself, which pairs beautifully with Resonance Insect. And their big boss is just balanced towers almost. It is a pain to face in that it's untargetable and indestructible, but it's not unaffected, which makes it less oppressive than something like Dragoon, but still not a waste of resources to summon it. And it also helps extend plays with one effect and puts itself to 5k attack with the other, because why not? Like I said in my Blackwing video, I'm a big fan of just a big stupid idiot that can just run over the field and just clear all my problems in battle. That is just one of my favorite things in Yu-Gi-Oh! Big dumb monsters with big dumb numbers attached. And we haven't even gotten to the Battle Wasps. I actually had personally bought Battle Wasps back in like, I think it was 2019, maybe 2020, whenever they first came out, because straight up I wanted a, I wanted a shitty synchro deck that my friends wouldn't hate playing against. And while I never really got to use them themselves in that deck, the engine that I ended up with is still great for Bee Trooper. Sting the Poison is a Stratos, and the effect negation pairs perfectly with that Seraph Papillion, or however it's pronounced. Pin the Bullseye is a free 200 to win in time and also easy extension. Twin Bow is also easy extension, and while it does lock you into Insects, which isn't great in the most competitive of variants, if you're playing more casually, that's honestly not a problem. The boss monsters do it anyways. And Arbalest, God, how do you say that card's name? The level four is a great search target off Gogi Pool and makes an easy Atlas when comboed with Armor Horn's second normal summon. Put plainly, all, all of, of this, this just, just works. works. It's not, I'm not kidding. It's like a perfect little concoction of all 10 years of insect cards that we've got over the last decade put into one deck. It's only playing the good cards, but they still have so much synergy that it, it feels like it's just one archetype all by itself. And if Black Wings had gas, this deck has nitro. It's just starters and extenders. All it does is go. This deck idles at like 80 miles per hour. Playing it is just a million little combos to bash beetles into your opponent and win the duel. With good hands, you can play through two or even three pieces of interruption and still get your Atlas on board. I also like this deck because it's, it's a fair one. A great board from Bee Trooper doesn't really involve any toxic cards, uh, bar maybe DPE if, if you're playing it, because 
why, why wouldn't you be playing it? It's this format. Everyone and everything is playing DPE. And then we throw the word hero into the deck title as if playing two hero monsters in the main and one in the extra constitutes a hero deck these days. Shoutouts to Invoke Dogmatica Shadal, by the way. One Shadal card, but it's still called a Shadal deck. Brilliant. Anyways, on topic. Other than DPE, <laughs> Atlas, a monster negate counter trap, Cicada King, Seraph Papillion to recover some things, maybe a Neptune buff. It's solid. It's, maybe it's annoying, but the deck isn't anything absurd. The deck can absolutely be played at a high caliber, no doubt. It placed second at a YCS recently after all, which is no small feat, but it's also just great for a local level of play and something casual to play with, just breakable boards. I love a deck that can be played casually for fun or cranked to 11 to make it more competitive. It allows me to both enjoy it at a casual level and also try and perfect it to get the most out of it which is always a blast and keeps you interested in a deck. I said similar things about Blackwing. The difference with B-Trooper is second place at a YCS. Granted, the wave we got of support in Burst of Destiny was underwhelming, to say the least. One usable card, one and a half, if you count something like Neptune. I don't know, I like Neptune, but Neptune can't recycle a banished armor horn or a Picofolina, which is a shame, really. The Stratos of the deck needing to be destroyed by battle is some of the most Warwalk tier, Warwalk? Warwalk tier bullshit I have ever seen. And the level six is only good if summoned off of Atlas, and it doesn't even extend plays after that. It just kind of loads the hand for the next turn. Oh, and the fusion, right? We should talk about the fusion, the, the world's worst towers. That is a super poly target for the opponent's side deck. If this ever becomes a big meta contender instead of a piece of actual support for this deck, why didn't we get the link three that could summon a monster from the banished pile to further extend our plays? That's a good question. And if you want to know the answer to that, it's because only the OCG can make good support for TCG archetypes. Prove me wrong. Put plainly, I like this deck because it's fun. It's it's like Phantom Knights and the, the plays just don't stop. They, the plays keep going, the plays keep coming and they don't stop coming. That's a, God, what a great joke. Yeah, definitely keep that one in. There's always a way to push your boss monster. It doesn't end on multiple fog blades and big negate boards, but hey, we have a big ass bug and phew, what else is Yu-Gi-Oh about? As I've heard it be described, it's Phantom Knight, but bad, which is, which is kind of true, but I'd probably prefer to say it's a Phantom Knight, but fun. I love Phantom Knight, and I'll probably be doing one of these videos on Phantom Knight in the near enough future, but man, bugs are just different. The bug, the, these, these, these guys just hit different. If you're curious about them, give them a shot. Try them on Edo Pro or Dueling Book or hell, maybe Master Duel's out. Is that, is that out at this point? I don't know when I'm releasing this. We'll find out, I suppose. You tell me. The deck is fun. I don't know any other way to put it. it it's, it's fun. It's not because it's meta. It's not just because you're playing with giant beetles with whole ass cities on them that would literally crush the opponent's monsters. Although that does help. Uh, it's, it's just fun. It's just really fun to just sit and play the deck. I, I highly recommend it. This is my current list. No DPE, uh, no good cards in general as seen by my playing Multiplication of Ants. It's just bugs and beat down. And that's what I'm about. I also did pay for a playset of Scout Buggy and pulled a fourth one as my secret rare from uh, a box of Donna Majesty. So I am maining that in the name of my spent dollars. Rest in peace, I will never see you again. I personally like to loop Pico Felinas to keep my resources going. It makes for a sustainable beatdown with multiple atlases over the course of multiple turns. And man, just one 5K atlas and two 3K atlases storming down the opponent is cathartic. I, I, I don't need therapy anymore. I just attack my friends with bugs. Kind of fucked up, but I mean, whatever gets us through the day, right? Feel free to critique it. It's hardly a YCS tier list. It is what it is. And yeah, that's why I play B Trooper. Thank you for watching. Like and comment if you could. Helps out the algorithms, I'm told, and that'd be really swell. If you leave a comment, I'll, I'll like it, and then you can like my video. And that's a fair trade. That's a very reasonable deal. Oh, and uh, remember, subscribe to YGO Strats so that you too can become a true duelist.